Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about the laws of limits. In the previous video, we have defined the limit of a function as x approaches c. Also, we have concluded that the limit of a function exists if f of c exists or f of x approaches the same value as x moves closer to c from the left and from the right. Evaluating limits can also be done analytically using theorems or limit laws. In this lesson, we will cover these laws and determine how limits for combinations of functions in the form of sum, difference, product, quotient, powers, and radicals are obtained. With this, let us start off with the theorem 1 which is the basic limit laws. For the first one, the limit of A as X approaches C is equal to A, wherein A is a constant number, meaning the limit of a constant number as X approaches C is equal to the constant number itself. Number 2, the limit of X as X approaches C is equal to C. Number 3, the limit of a times x as x approaches c is equal to a times c, wherein a is a constant number. And the limit of x raised to n as x approaches c is equal to c raised to n. Remember that all these four are applicable where a and c are real numbers and n is an integer. Let us have some example applying theorem 1. The limit of 9 as x approaches 4 is equal to 9 because notice that 9 is a constant number. Therefore, its limit will be equal to itself. The limit of x as x approaches negative 1 is equal to negative 1. Since we only have here the variable x, then its limit will be equal to c. The limit of 4x as x approaches 1 half will be equal to 4 times 1 half, wherein this is a and this is c. Therefore, that would be equal to a times c, which is equal to 4 times 1 half, which will give us 2. Next, the limit of x cubed as x approaches negative 2 is equal to negative 2 cubed which is equal to negative 8. Theorem number 2. Limit of a constant multiple. If A is any constant and the limit of f of x as x approaches C is equal to L, then the limit of A times f of x as x approaches C will be equal to A times the limit of f of x as x approaches C which is equal to a times l. For example, if limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 6 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 2 thirds, find the limit of 3 times f of x as x approaches c. Since this is a constant, then we can make this as our multiplier here. So we will have 3 times the limit of f of x as x approaches c. However, remember that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 6. Therefore, we will have 3 times 6, which will be equal to 18. Therefore, the limit of 3 times f of x as x approaches c will be equal to 18. Another one. Find the limit of 9 times g of x as x approaches c. So again, since this is a constant number, we will make this as our multiplier of the limit of g of x as x approaches c. Now remember, that the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 2 thirds. Therefore, substituting 2 thirds on this, we will have 9 times 2 thirds, which will be equal to 6. 
Therefore, the final answer will be 6. Theorem number 3. Limit of a sum and difference. If the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to l, and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to m, then the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c plus the limit of g of x as x approaches c, wherein it will be equal to L plus M. For the difference, the limit of f of x minus g of x as x approaches c will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c minus the limit of g of x as x approaches c which will be equal to L minus M. For example, if the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 12 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 fifth, find the limit of f of x plus 10 times g of x as x approaches c. Applying theorem number 3, since this is addition, then the expression will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c plus the limit of 10 times g of x as x approaches c. Notice that this is a constant number. Hence, we may apply theorem number 2 and we will make this as our multiplier. So that will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c plus 10 times the limit of g of x as x approaches c. Going back to our given, remember that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 12 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 fifth. Therefore, by substitution, we will have 12 plus 10 times 1 fifth. Multiplying 10 times 1 fifth we will have 2. Adding 12 and 2, the final answer will be 14. Another one. Using the same given, limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 12 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 fifth, let us find the limit of 1 sixth times f of x minus 15 times g of x as x approaches c. Again, using theorem number 3, this will be equal to the limit of 1 over 6 times f of x as x approaches c minus the limit of 15 times g of x as x approaches c. Since 1 sixth and 15 are both constant numbers, Applying theorem number 2, we can make them as multipliers. Hence, we will have 1 sixth times the limit of f of x as x approaches c minus 15 times the limit of g of x as x approaches c. Going back to the given, remember that this one is equal to 12 and this one is equal to 1 fifth. Substituting the values, we will have 1 sixth times 12 minus 15 times 1 fifth. Multiplying 1 sixth times 12 and 15 times 1 fifth, we will have 2 minus 3. Simplifying 2 minus 3, we will have negative 1. Therefore, the final answer is negative 1. Theorem number 4. Limit of a product. If limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to L and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to M, then the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c times the limit of g of x as x approaches c. 
wherein simplifying it, it will be equal to L times M. Remember that this may be extended to more than two functions. Let us apply theorem number four on some examples. If the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 12, and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 fifth, find the limit of 1 third times f of x times 25 times g of x as x approaches c. Applying theorem number 4, the given expression will be equal to the limit of 1 third times f of x as x approaches c times the limit of 25 times g of x as x approaches c. Since 1 third and 25 are both constant numbers, applying theorem number 2, we will have 1 third times the limit of f of x as x approaches c times 25 times the limit of g of x as x approaches c. Remember that the value of this is equal to 12 and the value of this is equal to 1 fifth. Substituting these values on our equation, we will have 1 third times 12 times 25 times 1 fifth. Hence, we will have the final answer 20. Theorem number 5. Limit of a quotient. If the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to L and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to M, then the limit of f of x divided by g of x as x approaches c will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c divided by the limit of g of x as x approaches c which will be equal to L divided by M, wherein M cannot be equal to zero. Let us apply this theorem in an example. If the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 12 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 fifth, then find the limit of 3 times f of x divided by g of x as x approaches c. Using theorem number 5, our given expression will be equal to 3 times the limit of f of x as x approaches c divided by the limit of g of x as x approaches c. Notice in the numerator, we also have applied theorem number 2 wherein we have here a constant number 3 and we made it as our multiplier here. Now from here, remember that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 12 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 fifth. Substituting these values on our equation, we will have 3 times 12 divided by 1 fifth. Simplifying this, we're gonna have 180. Therefore, the final answer is 180. Theorem number 6, limit of a power. If n is any positive integer and the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to L, then the limit of f of x raised to n as x approaches c will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c raised to n or L raised to n. Remember that this will only work for any integer n. Therefore, our n should have an integral value. Let us apply theorem number 6 in some examples. If the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 12, then let us find the limit of f of x squared as x approaches c. Applying theorem number 6, it will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c raised to 2. Substituting our value 12 on this equation, we will have 12 squared which will be equal to 144. Therefore, the final answer will be 144. Let us have another example. 
If the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 fifth, find the limit of 2 times g of x quantity cube as x approaches c. Applying theorem number 2 and number 6, we will have 2 times the limit of g of x as x approaches c quantity cube. Remember that the value of the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 fifth. Substituting that on our equation, we will have 2 times 1 fifth quantity cube. So we will have the final answer to be 8 over 125. Theorem number 7. Limit of a radical. If n is any positive integer and the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to l, then the limit of the nth root of f of x as x approaches c will be equal to the nth root of the limit of f of x as x approaches c or the nth root of l. Note that this theorem will only work when the nth root of L is a real number. Let us apply theorem number 7 in an example. If the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 12, then let us find the limit of square root of f of x as x approaches c. Applying theorem number 7, our expression will become equal to the square root of the limit of f of x as x approaches c. Substituting the value of the limit of f of x as x approaches c, we will have the square root of 12. Simplifying square root of 12, then we will have the final answer to be 2 square root of 3. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For our next video, we will discuss about the limits of algebraic functions. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next discussion.